The first thing to mention is that uh, yeast is a type of a fungus. In fact, we say that yeast is a unicellular yeast is a unicellular or single-celled single-celled fungus. Last time, we mentioned that most members of kingdom fungi, they reproduce by sporulation. They reproduce by spore formation. But, unlike the yeast that reproduces by budding. So yeast does not reproduce by sporulation like the other members, but it reproduces by budding. What is this budding? A bud, that's B-U-D, is an outgrowth from the main organism. So what happens is that yeast forms an outgrowth, what is called a bud, and then that outgrowth later develops and becomes another organism. It becomes another cell of the yeast. While that bud is still attached to the main yeast cell, another outgrowth develops on another side and later also develops into another yeast cell. So that process continues, continues systematically until we have very many outgrowths that form a mass of yeast cells. So in this case, uh, we are saying that a bud is an outgrowth from the main organism. So for example, uh, I have a structure of the yeast cell here. So this is a yeast cell. So a yeast cell, just like uh, the other cells, has a nucleus, it has some items inside, it has the cell membrane, it has what you call the food vacuole, it has the nucleus, it has glycogen granules, it has the cytoplasm, and basically other structures that are found within a cell. So this is a yeast cell. Now, what this cell does during budding is that it forms an outgrowth on one side, and that outgrowth later becomes another cell while still attached to the main parent cell. Another outgrowth may form on another side, what we are calling a bud, and then again it becomes another cell. So in the process, we may have so many outgrowths forming on the yeast, and that leads to a mass of yeast cells being formed. So in the process, uh, we form uh, or we have the yeast cells multiplying by the process that we are calling uh, budding. Now, just to illustrate that, we have one uh, yeast cell here. It forms an outgrowth. The same, same yeast cell forms another outgrowth on the upper side. The original one is still growing. And then it continues, the upper one is still growing, another one forms on the lower side, the other one is still growing, so another one may form here. So we have the first one, is a yeast cell, forms... So it starts by forming one bud or one outgrowth, 
while it is still attached to the parent cell, another outgrowth forms. The, the previous one is still enlarging. Others continue forming. So in the process, it forms a mass of yeast cells. So many masses of yeast cells are formed. And this is what you are calling budding. It's through the formation of outgrowths while it is still attached to the parent cell. Leading to cell multiplication. So the cells are able to multiply like that. It's also worth noting that yeast respires anaerobically uh, through fermentation. Through fermentation. And that's why we find that yeast is very, very important in industries. For example, in the baking of bread, we used yeast. Uh, also, in the brewing of beer, yeast is also used. So, we are saying that use, uh, we use yeast because, one, it multiplies very fast. And number two, it respires in the absence of oxygen. And for that, it can be put into so many useful uh, uh, purposes or it can be applied in so many industries baking industry uh, dairy industry beer brewing industry and so on and so forth that is because budding is a process that happens within a very short time so the yeast is able to multiply itself within a very short time as illustrated by what we have said so basically we have said that yeast is a unicellular or is a single-celled fungus. It's made of a single cell, as illustrated. Uh, it reproduces by budding, where a bud is an outgrowth from the main organism. And we have seen how the outgrowth forms and continues forming until we get a mass of cells. We have also seen the various structures found in the yeast. We have the glycogen granules, which are stored food, we have uh, the food vacuole also there, the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, and basically the nucleus. Now, uh, we have said that also uh, yeast respires anaerobically through the process of fermentation, and this enables, enables it to be used in dairy, beer, or brewing, and even baking industries. So yeast is applied in all those industries.